Welcome to the June 15th meeting of the Commission on Disability. Um, let's start with a roll call. Um, starting furthest to my right, we are joined by Martin Furtado. Yes. Uh, he's the new building inspector here in town. Um, so thank you for coming. Uh, Annette Eaton is present. Dr. Garofalo is present by phone. Melinda Bor I'm sorry. Melinda Bernardo Cuerdo. That's right. Is present. Daniel Knight's present. Myself is present. Dr. George Soutier is present. Stacey Martin is present. And Jen Dixon, I expect, will be present via telephone soon. So let's just start the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, um, let's dive right into the approval of minutes. So uh, at last meeting, we tabled the approval of the 518 minutes just so that we could jump into the survey stuff. So today we have in front of us um, the 518 minutes and also the 61 minutes. Um, has everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes, everybody who is present on 518 and 61. Um, if so, uh, we'll just jump right in and vote. So, can't find my 61 minutes, but oh, there they are. So, let's starting with 518. Uh, yes, oh, I my vote. Okay. Uh, Stacy Martin is a yes to approve. Uh, Dr. Garofalo, do you approve the minutes from 518? Yes. Uh, Ms. Bernardo Cuerda, do you approve the minutes? Yes. Uh, Ms. Martin is a yes. Mr. Knight? Yes. Ms. Eaton? Yes. And myself is a yes. Uh, Dr. Suti and, and Jennifer Dixon were absent that day, um, so that, that approval passes. Moving on to the uh, six one minutes. Um, I'll just go down the list as well. Dr. Garofalo, do you approve about the six one minutes? Yes. Uh, Ms. Bernardo Cuerda, do you vote to approve the 6-1 minutes? Yes. Um, Mr. Knight? Yes. Ms. Eaton? Yes. Myself is a yes. Uh, Ms. Dixon's not here at the moment. And Ms. Martin? Oh, Ms. Hey, Jen. Hello? Hello? Jen? Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? In any event, I think even without them, that, that passes the 6-1. Um, That's what, four of us? It is one, one, two, two three, three, four, four five. Oh, Dr. Five, five, yeah. yeah, five out of seven. Six. I voted yes. Yes, thank you. <coughs> okay, thank you. And now, dear's number six. Please leave your message. Do you vote to approve the six one minutes? Yes. Okay. And May 18th, yep. Okay. All right, great. So if that passes, I'm having trouble connecting with Jen. Um, so let's move on. Um, if we could have a vote to take the agenda out of order as we have someone who is here to speak, I think. Um, and we'll we'll take her first. So if I, if I could get a uh, motion to motion. take the agenda, do I have a second? Second. Second. I'll start with you to vote. Yes. 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 Dr. Garofalo. Yes. Myself is a yes. 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 Um, so we will uh, take the agenda out of order, and we'll welcome whoever is here to speak. Or I don't know if you're here to speak or just observe, <laughs> but... I'm just observing. Oh, okay. Yeah, Do you have any comments or anything you want to make, or...? Not currently. I just want to say I'm excited to be working with you guys on the survey. My name is Angela Morabito. Oh. I'm from the Welcome. Yeah, so I just wanted to kind of listen in, get a little background. It's kind of on here. Okay, great. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so let's jump back into it. Probably should have clarified that before we took <laughs> the vote, but I'm, I'm sorry to put you on the spot there. I have too many pieces of paper in front of me. Um, 
So let's just jump right into to old business here. Uh, subsection A is survey follow-up, and I'm going to give the floor to um, Linda. Yes. All you. So everyone should have in front of them a summary of the departmental testimony that was given. It's not a full summary of everything that was said, but what I did is I went through and I analyzed everything, bucketed everything into major themes, and then listed them by frequency. So the top ones were support services, accessibility of the town built environment, and mental health and, mental health and behavioral disabilities resources. So what I'm proposing we do with this is use Use these themes to think about creating survey questions around support services, accessibility, and mental health resources. So thinking about those three chunks of like things that the town could do and have survey questions related to those. So that's one thing that we can consider doing. The second thing I'm recommending is having the COD think about other areas that they would like to query on the survey and then also determining what possible actions we'd like to take from these survey data. So there's there's basically three pieces to this. So those are under recommendations and next steps. And then under additional opportunities, these are things that I thought came out of the meeting that were interesting and that we might want to consider for future types of action beyond running a survey. Like, what is there anything we might like to do here? Okay. Um, and... I don't think I have the sort of breakdown schedule in front of me. What is the timeline? Yes. If you could remind yep. us. So I have that here. So I need to, I didn't have a chance to update this before the meeting today, but I think what I'd like to do is Angela and I are going to work together. I think we can propose some survey questions based on the themes from the departmental testimony and present those to you next meeting along with you know an idea of like what the survey methodology would look like just real top level and then also what i'd like to do if we can make time for it is have all of us do a communal brainstorming session to figure out what those next themes would be that are important to the commission and then that would go into our next brainstorming or our next survey writing question session so for let's see for 713 We'll write some questions, bring you a methodology. Is it the 13th or the 20th? Uh, I have it Thursday. as the 13th. I think the Anybody 20th. have a I think the 20th towel? is the third Thursday. Uh, Let me see if I... Unless we decided that, I don't know if yeah, I... I might have written it down wrong. It, 20th would be the yeah, third. Yeah, It's the 20th. Okay, so the, the meeting on... Uh, this document is open in another tab... I'm going to change that. Okay. In any event, the meeting. In any event, the July meeting will come with some survey questions, and I'd like to be able to have us brainstorm on other areas so we can come the next time after that with survey questions. And finalize? What's, or what's the timeline for finalizing the survey? What I need to know from you, and I couldn't find it in my notes, is what is the date that we want a report that the town can act on? Like, when do we need final data? If, if I recall, it might be in the minutes from 18, um, Friday 18, there was some discussion about trying to, if possible, tie it to the CIP. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. In December. Dece that's, and so. My question is, what's that date? Is it I don't know if it's December? a specific date. I, I, I would, we were talking about October was the target. Um, let's see. Or the you know, goal of getting organized by mid-December when the CIP process is started. Yeah, so if we can shoot to have results analyzed <laughs> by early December, will that give us another meeting to kind of settle on, hey, these are the, the top whatever things we think are important? Um, What do you mean by that? Can you explain? Uh, yeah, so my understanding was that having it in line with the CIP process related to being able to make financial decisions yep. about resource allocations. Yes. So do we want to meet before that, before we hand it over to the town? So that to would say, probably be the November meeting. To say we recommend 
interventions in these areas. Obviously, they're just recommendations, yep. but this this is what we think is important to us as a commission. Yeah. I okay, so that, we want to do that in November. That would probably be our November meeting. Okay. And I, I'm not sure if this makes sense, is if we have sort of like the... You know, I don't, I don't know how detailed the survey report itself is going to be, if it's just going to be sort of like top line data and percentages and numbers and things like that, mm. plus a written recommendation section from us. Yeah. So I think um, that's what it'll look like. I think so we can... would we need to, I, I know we keep backing up almost, would we need to have that kind of have the discussion about the recommendations in October so that we can finalize and approve that report and the report and recommendations in November so then it can then shortly be passed off um, to the town for in, in December. Is that a possibility or is that yeah. too fast? No, I, I think we can do that. So done by October, done by October meeting, finalize in November meeting. Pass off by December. Just because I don't know when exactly in December the CIP process starts, when they need anything by, and you know I don't the the, the week before Christmas would be our meeting in December. I suppose we could hold it a little earlier, like the fourteenth or something like that, if we wanted. But um, I don't want to wait till that point to do the final approval if we can avoid that. That makes sense to me. I mean, obviously, if we get in a position, and I think everybody would agree that if. This is a long-term project and not just like a short-term, the once one-time deal where if we realize that this is bigger or that we bit off more than we can chew at this point and we can't make it to this December CIP project, you know. I don't think we're in that position right, right. now. I think that we can, if we get all of the questions finalized by our August meeting, and we launch in late August, early September. Angela and I will need to talk about how long we want to keep things up for and how, okay. how long analysis will take. But I think the schedule is ambitious, but I think that we can, I think we can do it. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions about this, this plan? Is everybody sort of in agreement with this timeline, this plan, any thoughts, suggestions? Well, I think what we're doing is it's almost kind of like a twofold path. One is coming up, in essence, with the actual survey, yes. determining, getting the questions that we all agree would be beneficial uh, for the public to see and answer, uh, along with the second path of taking some of the recommendations from the departments and making some decisions as to what to include, along with the survey results. Uh, for recommendation that we pass off to Tony and say here are some <coughs> recommendations that we have for these specific departments mm -hmm. this year and it just it carries over into each year but we're also not taking into account do we all, do we want to bring in these other groups who weren't able to come uh, at the last meeting I know uh, uh, the town manager mentioned a few of the including the the zoning board the planning board in terms of possibly getting input from them um, so I think we could probably do it like like dual track in the sense that mm -hmm. we develop the survey questions now based off of what we have, right. continue to solicit feedback from these other stakeholders, and whether those are factored into the actual development of the survey questions or just our analysis, understanding, and recommendations, we can. Mm -hmm. It's still valuable information to get, even if you know the survey's out and the planning board calls up and says, "Hey." This is something interesting, you know, we can still use that as part of forming our recommendations and analyzing everything. Because I think the survey is just one part of it. It's hearing yeah. from the residents primarily in addition to what we've heard from departments right. as well. And I think, to, to your point, is it's building the relationships across all of the departments mm -hmm. as well as with the community. And that's an ongoing iterative mm -hmm. process that's going to take us some time. So. I think including people and still doing the survey path makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, so as our survey expert, I'm just going to defer to you on all this. What do you need from us between now and the next meeting? Between now and the next meeting, I don't need anything other than for you to start thinking about what are some other areas you think it would be 
cool to include in the survey, like conceptually, and be ready to just kind of brainstorm. Like, I think it's really important for us to know about people with invisible disabilities. And I think the reason that's important is this. And just like let it percolate. And then next time, if I, I would like approval on this piece, if we could have 45 minutes of the next meeting for us to just do like some post its and we'll create some themes. Yep. And then that way, if we start to go off track and we're like, why are we asking this? We're like, oh, we talked about this and this was a priority. Do we want to reprioritize or do we want to stay the course? Okay. It helps us stay accountable for, for what we're asking. And what is it that you see, I guess for the length, size of the survey? What What's, do you have like a, I know we have a lot of sort of ideas and themes that we want to hit and get at, but what do you see as like, the right amount of questions to ask people that's not too overwhelming that is not you know that's going to give us enough data there's got to be some sort of sweet spot there that is in is also makes it easier to understand and digest the, the actual results that we get in it's not too voluminous so it's hard to answer that without knowing what themes we want to cover and what question types need to look like okay. certain questions are more complicated and take more time to answer but we want to shoot for like we don't really want it to take more than five to seven minutes sure. for somebody to answer so the number of questions will depend a little bit on the question format okay Does that make sense as a plan for everybody? No. Is it okay? Okay, just check in. Um, all right, so it, I guess, I don't know, do we table this at the moment and then move on to the next agenda and then you kind of can work in the background and... Yeah, I think Angela and I will work on it in the coming month and then we can do the brainstorming session at the next meeting. We'll bring you some questions to look at yep. and then we'll have that full approval. In August? Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, so I guess, I don't guess, I guess we don't have to table it. We can just move on to the next agenda uh, section here. Um, which is handicap parking enforcement update. I know this has been so, sort of a running theme here in a, in a discussion, and uh, I, I submitted a very detailed and sort of broad public records request to the town clerk, um, and uh, primarily through the town clerk, but primarily to the police department, since obviously they're the ones that handle the handicap parking enforcement. We had previously had that officer here who his ticket book, I think, said $150. Mm -hmm. The bylaw for certain, of which you have a copy in front of you, is $300 for a fine. It took a little bit of pushing to get anything. Uh, actually, the town blew through the uh, deadline, uh, the 10 business day deadline, um, in responding. And then I still maintain, and I've mentioned to Tony, that I don't think the town completely responded since there was some particular information that they haven't uh, provided yet. I don't feel like they really, like, at least from the one person that was right, I don't particularly feel like they really even wanted to be there. No, I agree. And they, they, they didn't particularly want to be at our listening session last time either, um, apparently, nor did the library department. But uh, that's another conversation for another day. But what I have in front of you here is three documents. Um, they look like this. One of them is a copy of bylaws, handicap parking, section 12. Goes on to the next page. Violations are $300. I got a spreadsheet from the police department which came through this company called Kelly Ryan and Associates, which I understand to be sort of like a... It collects. They're the ones that collect the tickets. They must take a fee and then the rest goes to the town. That's where you pay your right. parking but ticket. But if they're somebody like, if let's say you got a ticket and you didn't pay it, yeah. they don't do anything. Yeah, so... It's run by a third party, basically. Yeah, it's, it's oh. like a third party sort of collection agency, I guess. Um, the violators don't. There's no. I'm not sure what the what the penalty is. Of well, violators, you know, like they do in Providence. Don't pay. Yeah, I don't. And you don't go to RITT, like the traffic tribunal. I don't think. It's just like a. It's not even like a civil infraction. It's just like a parking ticket. And I think if you don't pay it, I'm not sure what that is. So maybe we can ask the police. They probably won't know or want to tell us. But 
Um, I can go over there and see if I can get some information just in terms of what their policies are. They don't have any policies. Do they have anybody that's in charge from the police department? They provided us their policies, which is one page parking enforcement number under park motor vehicles and parking enforcement and um Se seasonal variance officers must be aware that parking problems within the community may vary as the seasons change during the winter months parking enforcement efforts are directed at educating the public to park where overnight parking is permitted which allows blah 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 snow ambulance Officers should direct their attention to violations which are hazardous to the public welfare and appropriate enforcement, such as wrong direction parking within 10 feet of a hydrant, double parking, parking on a crosswalk, and handicap parking. That That is it. That is all that they've provided as to policies and procedures with respect to enforcement. Nothing regarding, you know, that's it. So they provided me this spreadsheet. And it's all the tickets going back to 2013 for handicap violations. One thing that I found very interesting is that I'm not sure exactly when the bylaw changed, but I know it did. But tickets, as recently as March of this year, were still being issued for $150, not the $300. So they have the old ticket books and they're not. How long have they been using that? I don't know. There's it, once it, it there's a mix of 150 and 300, all dating back through like 2018. 2018 is when the first 300. dollars Yeah, so was it's just been a mix of 150 and 300 since then. And this is only one ticket for this whole year. Yes, so far. Yeah, well, the one the uh, handicap parking. There are only places at I've the mall it. have been painted over. It was actually at 21 East Street is where they handed that one up. That's probably because I went on the computer and actually filled out the whole. To go online, <clears throat> you have to submit an application to be to right. then submit your complaint and <clears throat> you know with the information of the vehicle and the, the number, license number, state, and whatnot. It looks like the Patriots offender that you were discussing is Ramondre Stevenson. Las Vegas plate, eight nine one four nine Nevada. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and that was at twenty one East, yeah. a couple times. Um, and it, inter interestingly enough, Chief McQuaid, who I was not the chief at the time, issued two parking tickets. And oh, I think I lost Jen. Issued two parking tickets um, last year, twenty twenty two. One of them was for one fifty, and one of them was for three hundred. So he's got two different ticket books. Um, <laughs> Maybe Patriots, not Patriots. So my uh, my suggestion. I mean, if we really wanted to, we could go back to the date that it was changed to three hundred and say. Yeah, I mean, if it starts. It looks like the three hundred started in twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen is when the first one was issued. Yeah, I mean, the whole for three hundred. Not punishment. It's changed behavior. Right? I mean, mm -hmm. mostly it was because of the post office. Is that one spot in face in the front of the post office? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Last year there were five tickets issued. The year before three. The year before that, two thousand twenty. Interestingly, during the COVID years, 15, uh, 19, and 2019, to yeah. But it's interesting how the last two years have been combined light. have been light. You know, it's hard to take an inference from just basic numbers like that. You could take an inference that people's behavior yeah. is changing and they're doing a good yeah. job of not parking there or the community is not calling in, which is what the captain right. emphasized no more doing it on your phone or anything like that. You see something, you call the business line. Or it's 3 a.m. Sunday night right. or during when business I, hours. I spoke to the, the office manager at 21 East Street, and yeah. there's 199 units at 199 East, I mean, at 21 East Street. And that's a lot of cars. Um, she told me that they were coming out, they were ticketing people, I mean, she made it sound like they were getting done, mm -hmm. and like like <clears throat> at other times, it's always the 
you know, the people that have disabilities that are calling in on the other people right. that have disabilities, which, you know, you, you would get. But I don't understand, like, how she came up with that conclusion if only one has been written up. It, it could be that, and if you remember when the officer was here, it could be that if a call was made, um, person's gone. somebody that's, came out, the person was gone, or the officer, as he talked about, told the person, hey, you got to move. And they move without writing the ticket. Right. You know. Which sounds like the more. There may also have been. Uh, just the most likely thing. I know that there was a, there were some staffing issues in the last year or two at the police department, which maybe could have contributed to this too, that they were stretched a little thin. Um, but my recommendation, and I want to get everybody's feedback, is to write a letter on behalf of the, the commission directed to Chief McQuaid advising him of what we found and in essentially instructing him if we can do even do that mm -hmm. um we can well to, not to replace so I, I asked for a copy of the ticket books i didn't get that that's the one thing that they didn't give me you can recommend i i might have to tell mr borg that i'm going to sue the town because they violated the public records law i can also see if i can get the the record for 21 east street they wouldn't give it to me or when i asked for it but um, not not to <clears throat> get any names. I mean, we're not looking for names. We're looking for number of infractions. That's all, or number of times they were called, or all that's all that's computerized information. I mean, it's not. It's. I mean, it was computer age. It's, I think I still have the files for when it was changed because it yeah. was not good. So I the whole my, thing. It my was not my good. thought is that I will go through this list. I'll identify how many tickets have been written for one hundred fifty dollars since the bylaw changed right and ask them what was that ask them to rectify that and prove to us however they can well they can't rectify it. they just have to take those tickets well they have to stop issuing tickets for 150 dollars is what basically I mean. that's what they have to do to rectify it because one it's a problem for two things one it's not the level of deterrence that it should be two are the tickets that they're issuing for $150 even valid since they're not supported by the bylaws? And three, it takes revenue technically away from the Commission on Disabilities because these tickets fill our coffers. Right. Um, so it doesn't go to the police station. It goes no. to us. If it's for a handicap parking. It goes to us. It comes to us. And and so that's where our budget. It goes our to us. Banking. We don't get a budget and then the third the party, the third party that. Does well, the, they pay the third party, and the third party takes whatever fee that they get. I don't know what that amount oh, is. So they actually lose money, the police station, because they're... they're yeah, yeah, the police issue a ticket for 300 bucks. Kelly Ryan Associates, whatever, processes it for whatever fee. I don't know how that works. And then whatever left comes to us and goes into our... Account. Right. So, I can write a letter and submit it to you, and, and then you could just check it over. I mean, you have most of the information, but... Yeah, I, I, I think we should put together a letter <clears throat> and send it out. Um, you know, maybe we can... It, just the first letter should be nice, and it should be, like, non-confrontational, maybe. I, no, I like I confrontation. I can summarize the data. <laughs> um, well, we got we got to take into account also the part of the survey process and the input that we got from the police department is we want to advocate one of the things is the CAD system that they were talking about they emphasize that there is part of that they're both upgrading to a new CAD system right part of that has to be separate based on bylaws but we want to really see if they can't integrate that so key part. Jason Roy Captain Roy had sent an email to Tony and Tony forwarded it to me I can forward it to everybody else I forgot he basically said that he asked somebody in the tech department and that there is they can have Good. some integration between the two systems Obviously, I think the CJIS stuff, like the, the criminal justice information system, right. has to be separate, but they can have some integration between the two systems so that they can share information. That's something we should stay on top of. Because yeah, we sure never got any information from that gentleman that was yeah. there. None. So, <laughs> well, he just gave us the, the process that they go through right. and the thinking behind the officers. I because mean, that's they, how we found out that some of them, and, hey, please move your car. Yeah, it, it's because they... Case by case basis. Frankly, it's because they didn't take it seriously enough, so they sent the patrol officer. He was a nice kid, but I I was not offended, but it felt like a little bit of a... Yeah, you're not. Um, so I'm going to draft a nice, strong letter, and we can approve it next month and send it out. 
and see if we can get this fixed. And maybe have the chief come and talk to us. He does <coughs> Captain Roy next time. Um, I'm going to end up with a lot of speeding tickets in this town, I have a feeling, <laughs> after this. Hopefully they're watching or not. Um, so that's what we have to do, I think. So if, if everybody's good with that, do I have a vote to approve that? To, to start that process. And I'll summarize the motion. I'll summarize this data and send it off. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Ms. Eaton? What? Do you vote yes on your oh, own motion? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Dr. Garofalo? Yes. Yes. Myself, yes. Ms. Dixon? Yes. Yep. Uh, Dr. Soutier, yes? Yes. Yes, all right, so we'll do that. Um, moving on to the next section of, uh, I keep losing my agenda here. Is it new business? Yep. Yep, and we have our new building inspector here, so the floor is yours to introduce yourself, let us know what you have going on, if anything, and um, how are you? I'm uh, Martin Furtado. Um, pretty new here. One of my sixth week. Um, just trying to catch up to everything going on in the town. There's sure. a lot going on. Um, we're running into a lot of illegal apartments and stuff, or mm -hmm. uh, illegal build-outs that I'm trying to get ahead of. So. As far as new buildings and uh, disabilities, and we don't have anything immediately to discuss. Okay. Um, but anything that comes across, we'll talk about it at our next meeting. Great, yeah. Uh, I know that um, the prior building inspector, like if we got a, if you got a complaint or something like that through like the, inter, uh, the architectural access board or something like that, or somebody just made a complaint directly to the building department right that would be something that we would discuss so okay. um keep that stuff in mind it's great to have you on board thank you good to have somebody from the building department here again um does anybody have any questions for him at the moment all right we'll keep you off the hot seat today there you go. <laughs> thank you good thing you don't work for the police department <laughs> right we <laughs> waiting out you a ticket right now <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going to get out of here without going in cuffs apparently <laughs> um <laughs> We'll bail you out. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Makes those ticket funds. Yes, yeah. <laughs> well, they have to keep issuing tickets to pay that. So, uh, do we have any other unforeseen business? I know we talked about, and we're going to have, I think, a separate agenda item upcoming soon for like the CPAC relationship. Mm -hmm. Dan had sent an email. She uh, mm -hmm. she responded today, shortly before the meeting. Oh, she, she did get she back did. to me today. Okay. So, I think. While we deal with the survey stuff, I want to be able to focus most of our meeting primarily on that, but I'll start adding that to the agenda so we can start, start mm -hmm. discussing that. Um, but CPAC. CPAC is, the, I, what's it, how do you, what it's, does it stand for? It's um, this, like the Special Education Parent Advisory Board. Uh-huh. For it's the a, school. For the so schools. Mandated, it's a mandated committee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I was reached out to by uh, somebody that I know who, she works at uh, the Joan Jersey Foundation, the local charity, but she used to be a special ed teacher in North Attleboro for like 10 years before she went over there. Um, and I guess when she was younger, she had done some sort of ADA survey, but she offered to do anything that she can to help us with implementing, deploying the survey, whether it's going to people's homes or anything like that. Um, Ashley Reinhardt, so she, you know, if you need any help, I'd be happy to um, connect you guys and you can, she can help any way she can. It would be good if, I mean, I, the survey, if we could somehow maybe meet and have the CPAC before schools to start in September. I don't know if that's too ambitious on my part. Yeah. Only to see if there's, you know, we can continue to build throughout the school year. Yeah. If that's too ambitious, maybe September could be yeah, maybe a we 20 can, minute. Yeah, maybe we can invite them to either, which is the meeting that you want to carve out, like 45 minutes? We can invite them next, to the next ones. The next one, so maybe August we can have them come. August hopefully will be just reviewing and approving um, the survey questions and finalizing everything. So maybe we can talk, coordinate with them, somebody coming in August, and we can try to have a presence at their meetings too, uh, mm -hmm. if possible. They do their meetings um, 
they'll ramp up again it'll be once a month and they do it at community okay in the evening okay um are you a member of the, the board I, I, i'm not but i mean i i don't know who responded to an email but um, is it sarah stone or yes. is it yes. yeah so i mean yeah. we're on text communication okay, so, so uh yeah um so i mean that's not a problem perfect uh, maybe you can be our liaison mm -hmm. to them and, you know, if it's not too much of a burden, see if you can attend meetings for them. And Yep, which I go of, regularly for. Yeah, it's perfect. And just yep. kind of report back to us and we'll keep it as a, a running agenda item mm -hmm. um, going to the future. Okay. Does anybody have anything else? Any other comments, questions, business unforeseen? I have a question on, you said that the, uh, the mall had painted parking spaces? Good. The signs for handicap parking? Well, yeah, were the signs painted or the, or the spots painted? No, the signs. The signs were painted? White. All of them. <laughs> Add another thing to the list. <laughs> There's and not a lot of traffic why. there, so yeah. it's a lot of parking <laughs> available, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, well, I think one of the interesting things from what the few pages that you got, you did outline the number of required spaces yeah. uh, to be reserved for handicap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Which I think that's based off of state law or yeah, federal most law. Most likely, well, but that is a good resource to have. Federal. Yeah. And yeah. that's that's the current bylaws as they stand now. Okay. Good. Um, which were not actually provided to me. I was instructed to in them myself by the town clerk's <laughs> office. You can tell this is bothered me. Mm. Well, you should have. Well, that's kind of basic. Have given them to you. <laughs> well, I, no, it wasn't the problem of obtaining them myself and looking online, but I made a public records request and it should have been included. Mm -hmm. um, well, now you're digging. A lot of people don't like that. Yeah. Right. I'm a lawyer. That's what That's what I, 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 I mean, I get it. Believe me, I'm on board. The response to FOIA is the Massachusetts way. Yeah. yeah. So. I think it's every state. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised they didn't send me an invoice. Um, <laughs> if we don't have anything else, they might. If we don't have anything else, um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All right. And we'll start with you. Yes. 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 Myself, yes. Dr. Garofalo. Yes. Ms. Dixon. Yes. Um, Dr. Soutier. Mrs. Yes. Dr. Yes. Garofalo, I have your information paperwork for today. Um, okay. Thank you very much. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.